But you're going skiing. I am. Just as soon oh, as we get this briefcase you. back. What a drag. I was almost there. You know, I would be on the beach at the General's Mansion on the equator right now, soaking up the warm rays, and here I am back in Slushville. How far did you get? Miami. I was boarding a jet from Maracaibo and I get this message to haul my buns back here. So what happened anyway? The general that you were delivering that briefcase to was ambushed on some jungle road in Honduras this morning. Is he alive? Barely. Half of his staff is dead. That's why we have to get these papers returned to the Vance Helicopter Company by this afternoon. Would you like to go skiing? With you and Alan? Oh, thanks, Janice, but no. I really wasn't looking forward to snow. Alan's brother's coming down from MIT, Mickey. He wouldn't mind seeing you again. <laughs> well, there's bad snow, and then... There's, There's good, good snow. snow. <laughs> What's this all about? He's pointing like there's something wrong with our tire. There's nothing wrong with our tire. Are they after us or Mr. Vance's briefcase? I don't know. Either way, we don't play. I could not find a damn thing wrong with living. Between a paycheck and a fat retainer, we finally had a deposit slip higher than our last utility bill. We, of course, includes Velda. She with the Tuesday dress that made my eyes water. My Dow Jones was definitely looking up. This one deposit slip will cover us for the next three months. And by dinner tonight for two. Mm. At Antonio's. Make the reservations. Already did. What's the rose for? You can put that on your pillow. I'd rather you did. Yeah, like I said, things were going right. Too right. All right, work and check, Hammer. You're way behind on etiquette, Hennessy. Yeah, well, it's not good manners to keep a grand jury waiting, either. Grand jury? Your subpoena, Hammer. Now move it. Somebody better say please. Please. I just got the office cleaned up. I'll see you later. The DA had the entire Hall of Justice under heavy security. Trouble is, you never quite know whether they're trying to keep justice in or out. The only welcome face in the whole bunch was Pat Chambers, an all-pro cop and friend. We sure got a lot of security for one grand jury. We already lost the witness. Oh, yeah? Right. Pat? Before you blow about district attorneys, I'd like you to keep in mind you were summoned by Lawrence D. Barrington. Pat, I don't like being subpoenaed by anybody. You know that. If you keep it up, it'll be on your case and in your face. Good. Maybe you'll fill me in. Now, what's going on? He's building charges against the Vance Helicopter Company for bribery of various businesses and foreign governments. Now it's turned into a murder case. I don't have to tell you that Barrington is still a deputy DA. Yeah, who wants to be mayor. But why does he want to use me for page one ink? He's got a key witness in protective custody. She stipulated she testify only if you came in. Gee. Hey. It is Mr. Hammer. I hope I didn't disturb your morning too much. No, you didn't disturb my morning, Mr. Barrington. I said all you had to do was get on the phone, give me a call, tell me what's going on. 
You didn't need these empty suits. But let's get something straight. I don't owe you any explanations. And my office pulls PI licenses like I were dandelions. Yeah. Have you ever considered teaching a course in alienation, Mr. Barrington? Hey, I can be a very warm person when you're on my side. You get Betsy when you put a tag on my toe. Come on, fella. He's got a permit to carry a gun. Talk about time warps. Here was the only woman I ever asked to marry me. Hello, Michael. 19 years ago. And I'd still consider it. Hello, Chris. Where did you come from? I've been here a while. In New York? Yeah. Midtown, east side. Silk stocking district? <laughs> you still married? Widow. I was hoping you wouldn't look this good to me. Well, the years haven't hurt you any, Chris. No? no? I saw you on a newscast last fall. What? After you'd killed two people. Oh, yeah. Well, they weren't people. You seem to play that game pretty well. I play it their way, only worse. Is that why you sent for me? Partly. Who's trying to kill you? Not the Jack Vance or someone his helicopter company does business with. The DA says they'll lose interest after I testify. This could be a year just getting to trial. Yeah. Want to stick around? Help me keep alive? I'd have to stick very close. Like I always wanted to. Closer than you did in the Army, I hope. When did you meet uh, your husband? Mike, I waited a year and a half. Letters were getting strange, like... You were more interested in killing Viet Cong than marrying me. Listen, Chris, the reason I re up for another tour... And another. ...was to teach guys how to live through it. I had something to pass along to them. Well, I have something to pass along. A daughter, 19 years old. Her name is Michelle. Care to guess why she's named after you? Are you telling me that I have a 19-year-old kid? <laughs> She'll be 20 a week from Monday. Want to come to a birthday party? <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. You won't have any doubt after you see her. Dad. <laughs> Would you tell her about us? That we weren't ready for a standard marriage. And that you hit the road. Mike, it was better than telling her what you were really like at the time. Yeah. How does she feel about a father who plays bump and run? <laughs> Not good. <sighs> but sometimes she'd fantasize that you were back. We were a family. Well, when do I meet her? You have to be careful. She's involved in this? Deeper than I am. She's out there all alone, Mike. We'll talk about this later. Assuming you want to meet her. Any daughter of yours is a friend of mine. You're gonna love her, Mike. <sighs> later. Now then, this courier service of which you are half owner, Miss Jameson, is rather unusual. Would you explain to us what your couriers do? Uh, we deliver confidential documents for various uh, corporations, both domestic and abroad. Our organization is made up entirely of women. Do the corporations ever tell you what you're carrying? Occasionally. Some deliveries are blueprints, 
uh, engineering specifications, cost estimates, that sort of thing. I see. So in other words, you carry information that competing corporations and other governments might really like to get their hands on. Is that right? Yes. They're quite concerned about industrial espionage. Now, last Saturday night, one of your couriers was en route to Central America to make a delivery. Would you tell us her name and exactly what happened, Miss Jameson? Her name was Mickey Penoyer. She landed in Miami and was changing planes for a flight to Maracaibo when she was given the message ordering her to return. Who was the message from? The Vance Helicopter Company. The corporation for whom she was delivering the briefcase. I see. Now, why did Miss Penoya have to return? Well, General DeSoria, uh, the military chief for whom the briefcase was intended, had been injured in an assassination attempt. So, so Mickey flew back to uh, LaGuardia Airport. I understand that this is very difficult for you. And if you can, please continue. And was driving back to town. Was she alone? When someone tried to stop her. She she crashed. Thank you. According to the state police. A large vehicle tried to halt Miss Penoyer's car. And in the process, her car went off the expressway and burned on impact. Now, the coroner's office reports that the dental x-rays confirmed that body is that of Miss Mickey Penoyer. May, may I be excused? Certainly. Can we take a short recess, please? Oh. Chris! Call an ambulance. Chris! I saw some paramedics in courtroom C. Get them right now. Chris. Mark. What's wrong with her? Looks like a heart attack. CPR. Where are those paramedics? They're on their way. Where's your equipment? They're bringing it. Right, let's get her out of here. You're not helping, friend. Hammer. Get him out of here now. Come on, Mike. Come on, baby. Hurry, hurry! Move! Clear. Mike, let them do their job. All right, just don't get upset when I want to do mine. She's been under a lot of pressure. Maybe she couldn't handle it. Clear. If she dies... Out. Seems he's curious what went down in that witness room. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Keep those two sleeves yeah. away from me. You understand? Yeah. He's here right now. Whoever killed Chris is going under. One piece at a time. Listen, a witness named Chris Jameson died in that grand jury yesterday. The doctor said it was a heart attack. Rather convenient for the Vance Helicopter Company. Right. Too damn convenient. Listen, I want you to chase down any address you can find on Michelle James, daughter of the deceased, age 19. What do you know about tranquilizers? Most prescribed medicine in America. This is one of the more popular. Put those to a reliable independent lab and have the prescription verified with the pharmacy, okay? Mm -hmm. Who's Chris Jameson? Someone special, from way back. I'd like to see Mr. Hammer. Hello, Mr. Vance. Care for some coffee? Yeah, thanks. How do you take it? B -b 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 Black. Well, I'd like you to meet Mr. Jack Vance. The uh, speech impediment is post-traumatic stress, courtesy of Nam, right? Been doing your homework, I see. One of the more decorated Marines in the war, if you like Marines. 
Flew uh, helicopter gunships, right? Might have gotten the Congressional Medal of Honor if he hadn't tried to blow a Russian freighter out of the water. I'm curious, was it worth it? You know it as well as I, you were with Air Cap. Mr. Vance didn't like the helicopters he was flying, so after his court-martial for attacking the Soviets... Those charges were dropped. He came home and designed one of his own. Sales were around uh, 450 million last year. Of course, one-third of them were to banana republics on Uncle Sam's blacklist. This co coffee smells like perfume. Oh, we ran out of paper filters. So you used one of my handkerchiefs? Nice, nice, nice bouquet. How did you know I was an air cav? A little homework of my own. You're a loser, Hammer. You hardly make your lease money, because half your clients get... Get killed. Maybe I need tougher clients. Like, like me. Yeah, I want to, to, to... To hire you. From what I hear, you're a heat-seeking missile, and you're honest to, to, to... Honest to boot. To do what? Find the guys who murdered the courier I hired. That Mickey Pinoyer. Mr. Vance. I'm the client on this case. You're dropping into a red-hot landing zone, Hammer. I wouldn't solo this one if I were you. Yeah, I guess you wouldn't, Marine. I headed up to Chris's place, a townhouse in the upper 60s, where the addresses are in brass and the streets are a little cleaner, where poodle parlors make house calls. Letters were from Corporal Hammer, Sergeant Hammer, Lieutenant Hammer. Twenty-one months worth. Then I came to a couple addressed to me. Letters that Chris couldn't bring herself to mail. First, she asked how I felt about kids. Next one had the big announcement. Nine weeks pregnant. The third one asked me if we should consider abortion. The final letter said, eight pounds, seven ounces, Michelle. After you find out you're the father of a bouncing 19-year-old girl, you get an urge to see how she turned out. The baby pictures were there. Like her mom, she always had something to show her teeth for. The later pictures were another story. Someone had peeled off every photo that would show what Michelle looks like now. It's a good thing Velda told me you were here. What are you doing? You drop it in the DA's garden. Mike, I know how you feel about Chris, and I'm sorry. What the coroner have to say? Ah, oh, you're not gonna believe it. Chris died of a heart attack. Natural causes. You're right. I don't believe it. First, your PI license. Then he's gonna lift your permit to carry a gun. Mike, you can't be seen here. You might want to dust this for Layton's. Somebody ripped off all the photos of Chris's daughter recently. Daughter? What? Yeah. She's 19. Question is, were those pictures swiped to protect her or find her?
Calvin T. Pope, private investigator. For who? For who? <coughs> you know, you'll never make it as a PI, Pope. You got giant lizard breath. The emissary courier service, in which Chris was half-owner, was situated in one of those glass tombstones that always win architectural awards. Chris had helped build an example of how women are able to hold executive positions as well as anyone. My camera to see Miss Shepard. Some of them, of course, would look good in any position. A Mike Hammer to see Miss Shepard. Miss Shepperton will see you. Have we met, or do I just wish we had? Follow me. I thought the receptionist was a double-dip delight until I saw the rest of the office. I'd walked into a 31 flavors of women, and I wasn't on a diet. Uh, this way, sir. Hmm. On top of all this was Chris's partner, a Harvard MBA who came on like peaches and cream. Yes, George. I'm aware we'll learn about towers in Mongolia. While Jack Vance may have had the motive to snuff two witnesses, Isadora had taken control of this company. Even though Chris's daughter would be half-owner, that wouldn't explain Mickey Panoyer's death. What I couldn't get out of my mind was how Chris would look behind that desk. Anytime you're ready, George. Bye-bye. I was just about to call you, Mr. Hammer. Isidore Shepperton. Mike, you've got quite a handshake. Not many women bruise my knuckles. Somehow I knew you'd like that. I was just going through Chris's file, trying to determine who exactly is entitled to her share of the company. How well did you know Chris? Well enough to know that her daughter should get part of it. That's the problem. The last time I heard, Michelle was at Vassar. And then when I checked with the registrar, they said she'd been gone for two years, this month. Chris never mentioned that. They said she was going through a dropout phase, uh, feeling neglected. And she was. Well, it shouldn't be too hard to find her. Does that file contain any of Chris's medical history? Hmm. Some. Under her health insurance. You seem somewhat skeptical of the coroner's report. Can this be a connection between Chris and Mickey's death? Well, let's just say that the medical examiners overlook a few things now and then. I know she had a heart condition. Uh-huh. Possibly caused by rheumatic fever as a child. Yes, the doctor was, uh, giving her muscle relaxants the last time she took a physical. Would you mind if I kept this for a couple of days? I'd like to talk to the doctors. Feel free. Oh, one other thing. Any objection to my looking around your operation? None at all. Mr. Hammer, would you be interested in working for me? No. Not even to find Chris's daughter? No. You are a private investigator. One of the best. But I'm not going public on this one. Certainly not for you. I see. Do you consider me a potential killer? Honey, right now the only person who isn't a suspect on this case is me. 
Paula. Mr. Hammer would like a tour. I don't think I have to remind you of the district attorney's warning. You see, we're not allowed to discuss the Vance case or Mickey Penoyer with anyone. And I don't think he'd appreciate my personnel socializing with private detective. Perish the thought. Until after the trial. Since most of our business is overseas, we have our own photo facilities for passports. Our computerized tutors provide a basic conversational command of 37 languages. Bonjour. Je suis en train de me demander comment désir paraisse à la lumière de la bougie. She said she was wondering how your eyes would look in candlelight. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Au revoir. Yeah. And then there's body language. Often useful in self-preservation. Those two speak judo pretty fluently. By the end of the tour, I knew two things. First, these couriers were not much more than international bag ladies, some of them with black belts and sex. And secondly, to train for Paula's body, you'd need at least eight weeks. That about covers it, unless there's something in particular you'd like. I wouldn't mind a peek at the file on Mickey Penoyer. Sorry, that's a no-no. Too bad about the DA's rules. You'd make a great lover. I don't know about that. I do. Anything? Michelle Jameson's employment record. Two years at Sarah Graphic Film Company, several acting courses at the New York Drama School, and six months in a drug abuse center. Address? She moved out of an apartment on 8th Avenue about a year ago. We need a photo of her. I'm sure there's plenty of photos. She was an actress. So where are they? You forget who owns Sarah Graphic Film Company. Who? Jano Saracen. The Prince of Porno. How do you know Michelle was in his films? Starring Michelle Jameson. Here I was working up some enthusiasm for having a kid, and I find out she's frolicking in Sewer City with one of the top maggots. I wanted to puke. Investigator, I was looking pretty lame, headed in the opposite direction from my instincts. Instead of developing a lead on who fried a nice kid named Mickey Penoyer and may have killed Chris, I was in midtown traffic trying to pin a face on a daughter I wasn't sure I wanted to meet.
crowd. Que pasa, Michael? Eduardo, what are you doing here? Why aren't you driving your cab? I got tired of having guns stuck in my neck. I'm gonna be a certified perfect accountant. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. That's my excuse. What's yours? I need a slice of this film. A picture of... A picture of her without the mask. Well, that's Michelle Jameson. She peels everything but the mask in all her films. There she was, my own flesh and blood, wearing nothing but a mask. I guess it was her last bit of self-respect. Where do I find a photo? Sour Graph Studios, I guess. You shouldn't work for these maggots, Duardo. I mean, how do you sleep? I don't. Mostly I study. Yeah, but when you're a CPA, drop by. Maybe you can balance my checkbook. Hey, Mike. Sour Graph Studios, that's... John O'Saracen, man. You don't want to mess with him. Why not? He hurts people. Permanently. Yeah? So do I. If you like what you see, I've got other skills. Come back tomorrow morning. I work days at my husband's office. Got a warm one downstairs, Jano. Heavy duty. You want me to buzz her up? By all means, Sal. She reminds me of mother. Come in, Mr. Hammer. You're at no risk while I die, and exercise merely gives me gas. Go, keep going, good. Good, good. Keep going now, girl. Don't stop. Keep going. Terrific. Great, great. Let me get through it, Jimmy. Oh. <laughs> now, slop it up. Grapple and groan, girls. Come on, let's go. There you go. Good. Move it around. I suppose it was inevitable that we meet, Hammer. I've heard so much about your Don Quixote complex. Yeah? I've heard a lot about you, too, Saracen. Good, good. Where you eat? Always have a ringside seat, huh? I try to maintain an image. The King of Slime Square? That's it. No, no longer. Good. I'm turning my creative energies to more reputable profits. Pop it up some more. Care for some Duck Orange while we view my current epic? Good. It's called Deep Fun. Why would I want to see one of your films, Saracen? I can't even stand your face. Oh, Hammer. You're enjoying a most undeserved and very precarious hospitality. You know, one phone call, I could pull the plug on that tub scene. With a closer look, you'll notice these lovelies are discreetly clad, well within the diminishing mores of certain cable companies. I've made my last brown sock movie, Hammer. You have no lever, and I have no reason to discuss Michelle Jameson. Other than my natural generosity. Where is she? Lest you render judgment, you should know that Michelle Jameson was a burned-out doper when I found her, turning tricks for nickel bags. And you saved her from a fate worse than pornos? Oh, I cleaned up her arms, enrolled her in drama school. I put Michelle back on her feet again. Yeah, that's good. Last time I saw her, she was wearing a mask. <laughs> A chastity hat, she called it. Are you going to tell me where she is? <laughs> That's the vice squad. She turned you in? <laughs> I almost did five to eight in the house of doors. Love it. Almost. How long ago was that? About a year. I hear she changed her name. Yeah. <laughs> Probably because she heard what you did to the last girl who tried to rat on you. You're working for a disillusioned father, I take it. Yeah. Well, tell your client that Michelle's career was short-lived. While I had a minor part, Daddy played the major role. What do you mean by that? You abandoned her.
definite behavior problem, Hammer. <laughs> well, we just may want to film this. Back off, or I'll blow dry your brains. <laughs> what an entrance! None of it on film. Get your gun out, Mike. What for? You're doing all right. You think I'll forget this? You think I care? starting to read the obituaries. I've been out crushing crime. Huh? <laughs> Let me have a little brown water. Oh. Uh, no, I'll make it a beer. Keeping the streets safe for muggers, huh? When's the last time you were mugged? It's been months. Well, we're making headway, huh? Is Mike here? Yeah, he's in the back booth. Here, he needs this. I've never seen him so down. How can you look so blue sitting next to someone's dynamite? Did you take his pulse? Did you run anything on Michelle Jameson? Credit criminal checks. The vice picked her up a few times, leaned on her. She turned out as a concern. Well, that guy that's been telling you, Cal Pope, lost his PI license, some kind of blackmail scam. Any mug photos on Michelle? Well, they were trying to protect Michelle from Saracen. About a year ago, they had a gallery to testify, and uh, she disappeared. I know. Credit cards. An account of Bloomingdale's, same address as her mother, who canceled the account three weeks later. When you were going through Chris's apartment, did you find anything that might have belonged to Michelle? Nothing. Fingerprints in the photo albums belong to Chris. Some of them recent. You think Chris hid all of Michelle's photos? Well, honey, she had to. Hitmen, at least the pros, require pictures, right? She changed her name. Hiding her old identity would fit. Michelle finked on Saracen about a year ago, and Chris just got around to hiding her photos last week. Just when the Vance case is going to grand jury? Well, now, if you're looking for a connection between Vance and Saracen, you're talking about two totally different cans of worms. And two totally different killers tracking Michelle. Except for one thing. Saracen acts like he doesn't care about Michelle anymore. Doesn't have to worry about her. Like she's already at the bottom of... It's the most important case in my life, and I don't even have lead one. I've seen every part of her body but her face. I don't even know if she's alive or dead. Most important case? I'm looking for my daughter. The porno queen. That bothers you, huh? I don't have any ties on you, Mike. I'm aware of all the other women. It's just... I just never thought of you as a father, that's all. Mike, what makes you so sure that Michelle is your daughter? Oh, she's my daughter, all right. It doesn't necessarily make me a father. Uh, hey, geeks, who played the denture music? <laughs> you ought to flush that music bartender before it backs up your jukebox. You've got a request? Put a quarter in it. <laughs> hey, Granny. Get up and dance. Let's see your tennis shoes. <laughs> Nice legs, whoa. <laughs> Easy, Mike. Mike, you're gonna tear up my bar just to let off some steam. I'm ready to leave anyway. Come on, let's go. I'll be right there. Have a nice evening, fellas. Yeah, yeah right, right. right. Have a nice Have evening. Have a nice evening, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Hello, Mike. Marty. I need a police special. Mike! Hey, shh. 
Sharon. Karen. Marshall. Karen. Atlantic City. After the beauty pageant. Oh, right, right. Um, oh, excuse me. This is my friend, Betty Braldo. Hi, nice to meet you. Excuse me. Um, my number's still the same. Good, I'll remember that. I didn't even think you recognized me. It's probably because you're wearing clothes. It's been a bathing suit. And who was that? A couple of guys I went to school with. Just one of those nights. Taxi! Gonna help him with that chug? Well, I may have to. Good night, honey. Listen, I'm all right. You're due back at the precinct. Hey, Pally! You know how many brain cells you're destroying with one hit? Yeah, thousands. So what? It's better than thinking. <sighs> Mike, we're gonna find your daughter. Meanwhile, you gotta cool out. Yeah. Meanwhile, Chris dies in the Hall of Justice. <laughs> Hall of Justice. For a DA who wants to be mayor. So the system stinks. What else is new, huh? You know something? There was only one convicted killer that was executed in America last year, while 165 police officers got the death penalty in the line of duty. Does that make any sense? Listen to that. You know, five people are gonna get killed in the city within 24 hours? Five people turned to garbage. More like seven. It's pretty. I don't understand what's happened to our values. I really don't. It's the me generation, Mike. The me generation. I thought that show closed with the 70s. Held over by popular demand. Well, let me tell you something, old buddy. It's time for the we generation. It's time we stopped bad-mouthing this country we lived in and started doing a few things, started solving a few problems. Yeah. When I grew up, the people next door were neighbors, not strangers. Back when people looked out for the folks next door. Easy, Mike. It's still visiting hours, isn't it? For relatives and close friends. Guess that leaves me somewhere in the middle. Heard so much about you from Chris. Oh, yeah? Chris, I know, didn't blab about friends. As I recall, you were wounded three times in Vietnam. Once by our own jets, which you didn't mind terribly because... That got you rest and recuperation in Hawaii. Where Chris met you. At a hotel on the side of a volcano. Your room came to be known as the lava bed. File on Mickey Panoyer and Janice Wells. Who's Janice Wells? One of our couriers. She picked Mickey up at the airport the day of the crash. Was this Janice Wells in the car when it was run off the road? No one knows. She's just missing. Maybe the guys who ran them off didn't find the briefcase. And Janice Wells has it. Maybe. If she isn't floating in some river. First Mickey, then Chris. Now, I'm running out of friends, Mike. Don't worry, Paula. I'm going to dump these toads in their own burn bag. Chris said you knew how to deal with killers. How to make a woman feel safe. How well did you know Janice Wells? Hey. I did something nice for you. Now it's your turn. Do something nice for me. you drop by. Something told me we'd get along. Mm-hmm. Paula. 
Mm. How long has Chris been on tranquilizer? Back to work already. How long? Not long. I got a first refill last week. You picked up a prescription? It was delivered to the office, and I took it over to her at the courthouse Saturday. That prescription was filled on Friday. Must have been delivered late. I'll check it out if you like. You were going to tell me about Janice Wells. Cute and clever. A lot like Mickey. There's photos in the files. Well? Those two were rather close. Poor Mickey. She'd just gotten off to a clean new start. New start? Somebody said Mickey'd been a heavy doper. Is that all? Knew her way around 8th Avenue. Made porno movies? Uh-huh. Under the name of Michelle Jameson? Good Lord, I didn't know that. Where's the photo of Mickey Pinoyer? Are you telling me that Mickey Pinoyer and Michelle Jameson were the same person? Paula, it's time to say goodnight. A couple things I gotta do. Mickey was Chris's daughter? See you later, okay? Okay. Good night. Good night. Two things you can't share are pain and guilt. I'd learned that writing letters to families of guys killed in action. But what do I do with love for a daughter I'd never known and never would? Hammer, I was real curious to see why your brain hasn't been impounded yet. It's been overparked in so many illegal areas. Your arrest record. Yeah, I noticed the results. You know something? Your license is hanging by a thread. Now, a witness died at your threshold. We can hold you. What did the M.E. have to say? I'm not through. Neither am I. Paula Corey probably saved my hide. That hit was meant for me. Then why didn't they let her go? She recognized him as my guess. Cause of death? Fracture of the third CV. Spinal cord almost completely severed here. Well, there you go. Breaking necks is in my style. And that's why you're not holding me. You're looking for a guy who drags his knuckles on the ground. Paula Corey passed on a knee, April. Yes, files on Janice Wells and Mickey Pinoyer. Janice picked Mickey up at the airport. I'll send him over to you. All right, so now you know there were two girls in that car and one is missing. Anything else? Only that Mickey Pinoyer's real name was Michelle Jameson. Are you trying to tell me that was Chris Jameson's daughter that burned in that car? All I'm saying is that dental x-rays don't lie. Now, are you through with me? Not quite. Other agencies are involved in this now. State Department, the feds. Mike, there's more here involved in the illegal sale of military arms and bribery of a foreign official. You know what that means, Hammer? Yeah, I know what that means. You stumbled into a big one. What do you mean, stumbled? I mean, your case against Vance is pretty shaky, and you know it. The grand jury would probably throw it out. But then Mickey Pinoyer gets barbecued. And now Vance has got a murder charge hanging over him, so you can put the squeeze on him for names of people he's bribed. People both in foreign governments as well as ours, another Korea gate. You know something, Hammer? He gets the National Book Award and probably becomes a full district attorney. You know, you were told to stay the hell away from this. Yeah, well, maybe this won't stay the hell away from me, and you know it. That's why I've still got my license. So you can drag me behind the boat and troll for sharks. Uh... What kept going through my mind was Chris's last word in that courtroom. Michelle. I had a feeling she was still out there somewhere and needed me. He just came in. Vance. Tell him I just went out. Lab report on Chris Jameson's tranquilizers. I'm sorry, Mr. Vance. Could I have him return your call, please? Listen, you long-legged twit. I can hear that 
that silly sleep. Wonder if my tetanus shot is still good. I'll put him on the other end of the spark box right now. Vance, how come you don't stutter when you swear? It's like singing. I sort of get into a rhythm. We gotta have a talk, Hammer. Come on down to the yacht base and we'll have a face to face. Push another button, Vance. I'm not on your leash. You don't want to hear about Janice Wells? Yacht Basin? Yeah, right at the end of the dock. The good ship, lovely lady. Are you working for Vance? Listen to this. Tablets are a dried aqueous extract of Stygius toxifera. Tox? From the same vine family as Tuba carari. Onset of symptoms are delayed and often identical to cardiac arrest. How did the coroner miss that? The body burns up the poison. Plant found only in Central and South America. Where Vance does business. If Chris Jameson's testimony was going to lock him up, this is going to put him in the gas chamber. For the murder of Mickey Pinoyer as well. Yeah, but what we don't know is who Paula saw outside my door. It wasn't Vance. Whoever killed her had to be right there. If you need me, I'll be out of here. How do you know Vance isn't setting you up? Mike! <laughs> I'll be with you in a moment, Mr. Hammer. You ought to buy on the calendar. It does two miles a day, rain or shine, winter or summer. Yeah? He's either got pure alcohol in his veins or very hot blood. Very hot blood. I bet it keeps you in pretty good shape, too, huh? Can I get you a drink? Yeah, thanks. Uh, beer, if you've got it. Anybody tell you the temperature of that water? Yeah. Right between hypothermia and zero population growth. <laughs> oh, it feels great. You're in pretty good shape. You work out? Yeah. I do 12-ounce curls every day. What about Janice Wells? I'm going to lay out a fact that could land me in prison. Why trust me? Because you never burned a client. If you were my client, Vance, I might make an exception. Janice Wells disappeared the night that Mickey Pinoyer was murdered. She has an attaché case of mine containing... Two million dollars in currency. Bribe money with the South American general? I make one of the best choppers in the world, Hammer. Nothing sells overseas without perks. The DA wants that case for evidence. It's my money. You find Janice Wells, you'll find that case. You'll also know who... Killed your daughter. Marla. It's 20K against 15% of the cash you recover. You find all of it, I'll give you 300,000. I'm not sure you'll be around, Vance. Chris Jameson was poisoned. Toxic substance grown in Central America. I'm not your man, Hammer. What if you're lying, Vance? You'll have a good show. I won't even have to drop any pellets in the pan. And I had nothing to do with your daughter's death. I certainly hope not. Blowing away heroes is not one of my specialties. Sir, you can't go in there unless I announce you. You're a cool lady, Isadora. 
A corporate cool lady. Somehow, I don't think that's a compliment. Smart. That's all right, Lisa. One partner and two employees in the morgue and another on the way, and your only problem is where to have lunch. Mr. Hammer, in case you didn't notice, half those offices out there are empty. My couriers are terrified. I'm trying to sustain operations, and I still have girls that need paychecks. You never mentioned that Janice Wells was in the car. Orders of the district attorney. Listen, Janice lived in Queens. Mickey could have dropped her off before the crash. Any idea where she might be now? I'm afraid to guess. Hope to God she's hiding somewhere, but... But what? We'd have heard from her. Yeah, if she trusted you. How many people around here knew about the briefcase that Mickey Panoya was carrying? Well, let's see. There's Chris, Mickey, Janice, and myself. The only person who knew what was in that briefcase was Jack Vance. What about a secretary? Arla? Yeah. Possibly. There wasn't much she didn't know about Jack. And she did deliver the case to Chris the morning that Mickey left. How do you feel about Vance? As a businessman, a lover, or a potential killer? All of the above. Let's put it this way. In another few years, Jack Vance will be on the cover of Fortune magazine. Centrally, he's in a Megaton class. And like any self-made millionaire, he worships his creator. You covered A and B. Basically, he's a nice tycoon, if you don't push his button. What happens if you do? That's one question too many. Uh, right. Well, I hope for your sake that this office isn't bugged. Is that all the appreciation I get for breaking the DA's gag rule? No. After this is over, you and I should have dinner together. And breakfast. Hey, Marty. How about a 50 center? Enjoying the recession? I seem better. Marty. You seen her before? Yeah, she's been in a few times this week. Her name's Teresa. Teresa. Oh, how'd you like to have that on toast? With everything on her. Hold the mayo. Speak for yourself, dude. Let the lady alone, huh? There's plenty of room down here. So what do you think? About what? About you and I dancing. No. No. Very no. I mean... Oh, man. Oh. Put on the wheelchair music. Hey. Dipstick, you want to leave the lady alone? You mean dipstick? <coughs> you want to dance, huh? <coughs> hey, just stand here. Perfect. Hey, Mike, that's enough. Sometimes he gets a little greedy. Now you, I could dance with. I do it myself. People wonder where I find the time. You like a drink of beer, bourbon? Oh, no, no thanks. I've had enough. You look tired. Yeah, well, fortunately, I have a bed. Think you can find it? Shouldn't take long. Well, uh, there's something I think you should know before you head that direction. You're a virgin. No. I'm your daughter. I know.
It isn't every day I meet a young woman who is sharp and beautiful and my daughter. And we weren't shy on things to talk about. So Mom told you I was definitely alive. Yeah, right before she testified that you had died under the name of Mickey Penoyer. <laughs> my disguise wasn't all that great, huh? Well, you looked a little older than I expected, but I already had a hunch and began putting the pieces together. A hunch? Once I saw you, I couldn't take my eyes off you. It's like I hadn't looked at a woman that way in 20 years. And then when you threw the whiskey in the punker's face, I knew you were family. Okay. Eggs basted four minutes, bacon lean and long, right? You got it. What else did your mom tell you? Oh, that you timeshared a bar stool on 2nd Avenue, where the drinks used to cost 50 cents, and they played World War II music. And your drinking buddy is usually Pat Chambers' Captain of Homicide. You got a complete file on me. All I know about you is your birthday. Monday. 19th of November, right? Yep. Yeah. Another Scorpio. You think this place can handle two passionate hotheads? I don't know. I'll have to look at my lease. Well, one of us could try holding her temper. You think I dumped you? I just wish you hadn't mentioned birthdays. They were hell. You know, I used to stay home from school so I could be by the phone, thinking maybe one year you'd call me. Michelle, I never knew you existed. Your mom never told me. Why would she do that? I don't know. Maybe she thought it was easier to say that I left her. So that people wouldn't think... What, that you got her in trouble? Hey, how come you never came and saw me? And gave me a chance at being a dad? I looked up the word bastard in the dictionary after Mom told me who my father really was. It said, illegitimate and inferior. I was a reject. I was never wanted. So I just decided just to see how... See how far you could fall. Yeah. And when I hit bottom, I wanted to stand up and tell everyone I am the bastard daughter of the famous and very righteous Mike Hammer. Well, you made a pretty good job of it. You saw my films. Our eggs are getting cold. So you dropped out of Vassar two years ago next Monday. But the phone didn't ring on your birthday. They're pretty smart for Dad. Not smart enough to know how Chris switched your dental charts so smoothly. Well, after I was thrown from my car, I saw it explode. I saw these guys searching for the briefcase. Did you happen to get a look at them? No, I was too scared. But I got to a phone, and I told Mom how um, Janice had burned to death because of a stupid briefcase. Anyway, she went right down to the dentist's office that night. But how did she manage to get him to two dentists' office at night? Well, most of us that worked for the courier service went to Dr. Tabor, mainly because Mom used to date him and she knew where he got the extra key. I see. So she slipped Janice Wells' x-rays into the film holder with your name on it, yeah. and you'd be safe. People would think you were dead. Yeah, I'd already gotten some calls telling me I'd better not testify. Where did the coroner send Janice Wells' body? Well, Janice didn't have any parents left, so Mom had it sent to a funeral home. Um, McGrady Mortuary on West 59th. And what did Chris do with the briefcase? I don't know. She wouldn't tell me. What I didn't know, I wouldn't have to lie about. That's what she said. Shrewd lady, your mom. Yeah. Mother courage. Just wish she were here. Honey, honey, just... Better not stand too close to the window. It's dangerous. I want you to remember that for the next couple of days. 
Why didn't you marry Mom? That's a good question. Let's talk about it tomorrow, okay? Things just would have been so different, you know? Yeah, I know. Come on. Daughter, let's get some sleep. Good morning to you. Good morning. Well, they don't call me Veldus Interruptus for nothing. I don't suppose you brought a newspaper. No, but the Jets won by three. Oh, yeah? What about the Giants? Yeah, what about him? Well, I had money on that one. Say, la vie. Now that you're here, I got a couple of shirts I want you to iron. Wonderful. Are they clean? Oh. This is Teresa. You iron the sheets, I suppose. What is going on? The living room is bugged. Velda, this is Michelle. Hi, Velda. Michelle, your daughter? Yeah. And what did they get at the office? They got the lab report and the tranquilizers and all the notes I wrote on Michelle. Who is doing all this? Well, I think Vance is involved in the DA and somebody else. But whoever it is is using me to find you. Now, Velda, I want you to stay with Michelle until I get back. And don't open that front door to anybody. You understand? I mean, anybody. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to give Vance a call, do some trolling. Hey, Arla. This is Hammer. Put Vance on, will you please? Jack, it's Mike Hammer on line one. How's it going, Hammer? Not too bad, Vance. Listen, I thought I'd take a drive out to the Brooklyn Heights Cemetery and visit a few friends. What do you have? Some dead presidents you might recognize. What? Why this cemetery? Nobody interrupts. I've been out to Brooklyn since the Dodgers went to go, go, go. Gold chains and sunglasses. Right. Have you noticed the larger tombstones have the longer lifespan? It says something about money, doesn't it? You not buy happiness, but it gives you better leads. You got a key? Yeah, I got one, but it's not going to work. This is my briefcase. All that pose right there, folks. I never like shooting reports. Besides, this place is filled up already. I thought I recognized the curls, Hennessy. Well, I almost wish you'd try something, Hammer. I already did, Conlon. The hook is sticking out of your upper lip. I have a right to remain silent. 
Anything you say may or will be used against you. And if you can't afford a lawyer, we'll be glad to provide one for you. Take a seat. You can have a seat too, Hammer. Thanks, I've been sitting all day. Hey, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. What's going down here? Just Tennessee. He's overworked. Somebody got a key for this? You didn't search him, right? Uh, as well as I know how. Dear Vance, I just wanted to find out who planted a microphone in my apartment. Nothing personal. Hope this finds you well. Yours truly, shark meat. P.S. If the D.A. winds up with this, you can sue him for false arrest. Well, Hammer, with a finesse like this one, you must play a fair hand at bridge. I like poker. That's too bad. You'd know what a trump card was, because one's being played at this very moment. with the phony attaché case turned out to be a lesson on how you don't play footsie with the DA, not without stubbing your toe. While I found out it was the DA's mutt who bugged my place, he figured out I was hiding Michelle, and there went her cover. And Vance, thinking I was playing a shell game with his missing two million, he was about as cheerful as the Ayatollah. Hammer, there's no place you can run. Just no, no place you can hide. I never learned how to do either one, Jairine. You, you... You're going to get Max Hammer. Oh, hold it. If you're going to be threatening people. Just s s you're stating a fact. Go, Mr. Vance. Could you two step in here, please? This young lady's convinced me that she does not know where her mother hid the attache case. We can assume, however, by the frantic way in which she got rid of it, that the contents are either incriminating to Vance or valuable. Or both. We can also assume that she's going to be your key witness on the 6 o'clock news. Naturally. She made several deliveries for Vance, and she knows names. Mr. Barrington, when you make your announcement in front of the camera, and I know you will, are you really going to tell the world that you broke into a private investigator's office and bugged his apartment? You know something, Hammer? Your license is no longer on the line here. You are. I can pick you up for questioning any time I want, as often as I want. As far as I'm concerned, you're the pizza man, and you will deliver. Yeah. What about Michelle? We can arrange for her. Like you did for my mother? Barrington, she can leave here any time she likes, as often as she likes, and you know it. I'll get up on that witness stand for you, Mr. Barrington. But I'm staying with Mike. Well, Captain Chambers has what I think is a pretty good idea. Oh, yeah? As long as it doesn't include Null and Void. Hey, we brought you down here pretty easy, Hammer. Hennessy, if I catch you in my apartment or my office ever again, I'm going to dance a flamingo on your face. Hey, Mike. You haven't even heard the plan. You just might go for it. divorces have you had on this block? Uh, well, there was one down the corner about a year ago. Yeah? Neighbors told me they got back together last Christmas. I thought so. A hotbed of fidelity. I'll even bet you got uh, Little League in the summer and hockey and skating in the winter. My daughter, the job. Here we go. Home sweet home. How long are Linda and the kids going to be in Indiana? Oh, it's hard to say. If this is the grandparents, it could be up to a month. You make yourself at home. Oh, well, that won't be too hard. She won't have to worry about being wiretapped. <laughs> you mean Bush League bugs in the overhead, huh? I tell you, I think Hennessy and Condon took their electronic surveillance from Matchbook Mail Order School. Well, now the DA's court order was for a phone tap. Easier, quicker. 
Well, then, who put the microphone in Mike's light? I don't know. Well, we better check that out, Pat. See if it was the Sparkies that wired us or tapped us. All right. Beer in the fridge. Spare ribs on the way. For you? Be back in a couple hours. We'll have ourselves a backyard burnout. Can't wait. He makes a barbecue sauce that feels pain. Yum. I'll do the baked beans and the potato salad. You know how? Sure. Where's the can opener? <laughs> Why didn't I marry your mom? No, I already know the answer to that one. You do? Yeah. You like your women. Right? It's not that simple, kid. You know, when your mom stopped writing me, I was, uh... I was in a hospital, praying that I would walk again. And I met this Australian lady who, uh... Dialed me back to some sanity, helped me to get well, gave me some love. We were just getting close. We were having dinner one night in a Saigon cafe, and the VC threw a satchel charge through the front door. I didn't have a scratch, but they had to pick her up with a shovel. So what's that got to do with Mom? Well, when I got home, your mom was involved with another guy. I mean, he was a nice guy. Seemed to have his head on straight. I was going through re-entry, and... Uh, then I got very lucky. I met a wonderful lady. Uh... Ken? She didn't live long enough for me to marry her. Michelle, I take women seriously, and you know what it gets them? A body bag. Where are you going? Oh, I feel like a beer. Michelle, what did your mom say about the briefcase? Uh, that it was in a place where nobody would want to look. Where did she send the body of Janice Wells? McGrady Mortuary on 59th. Why? I'd lay nine to five that the briefcase is with the body of Janice Wells. Oh, damn. I mentioned the McGrady Mortuary at your place last night. That microphone. Thirty third precinct, Curly. Yeah, would you tell Captain Chambers when he gets in to call home immediately? Thanks. Good story.
What's up? Yeah, Captain. We got a radio call from an ambulance downtown. Uh, Mr. Mike Hammer was found in McGrady's mortuary. Said he wanted to pass along a message. All right. Hold your IDs in front of you and keep your safety strap on your weapons. Yes, sir. What happened to Hammer? Well, the emergency medical team said it looks like a skull fracture. He is conscious, but they said that Hammer never knew what hit him. <laughs> Michelle. I don't know. Two cops in a patrol unit. Some story about you being hurt. Out of the corner of my eye, I see a karate kid coming faster than I could think. Like a sledgehammer. Yeah. Well, let's get some ice. Now we know what happened to Paula Corey. Sit down. The only reason your neck isn't broken is you don't have one. What'd they look like? Medium height, sharp features, noble type of face. Now, the other one looked like a cop. Uh, stocky, uh, Italian looking. Yeah, him I might know. You, you got hit too? Yeah. When I got to the mortuary, somebody was already going through the body bags. They get the briefcase? I don't think so. It's doubtful. When I got clouded, my gun went off and drew some of the morticians down from upstairs. They found me on the floor with half their corpses. Maybe that's why I had callers. They came up empty at the mortuary. I still think it's the most natural hiding place for that briefcase. Hello. My camera there? Yeah. Yeah? What would you say if I told you I don't know where it is? Hey, she already tried that one. You got till 2 a.m.? Then the bleeding starts. Maybe I can't find it till tomorrow. No! Please! We're playing hardball, Hammer. All right, where do we meet? There's an old mannequin company at 8th Avenue and West 27th Street. Second floor. One way or the other, I'll be there. There's only one way, Hammer. And if you do that empty briefcase number or bring any cops, you'll just hate yourself. For killing your daughter, I mean. You know, you may wake up tomorrow morning after all. That mortuary was my last hope. Where is the body of Janice Wells? Maybe it's still at the mortuary under a different name. Look, there was no Mickey Pinoyer there. There was no Michelle Jameson. Wait a minute. Uh... Chris did put the money in the body bag, and she was worried about something happening to her. She'd use a name that you'd know, like uh, like mine, or uh, or yours. Bingo! Yeah, I noticed the marks. Looks like somebody picked the lock. You know, my hunch is that, that somebody wanted to make sure there was cash in here before the trip was called off. Then they were going to rob Michelle after she left Miami. So it wouldn't look like an inside job. Laundry the cash in South America. Very tidy. Hey, Mike. That's evidence. I'm not buying votes for Barrington. It's my daughter's life we're talking about.
Spread your heels, hotshot. Should have bagged you when you were in season, Pope, when I thought you were a P.I. Yes, sir. Good things come to he who waits. Now, you're on the sharp end, clown. That's a diplomatic courier case. What kind of device? Incendiary. We never had our dinner, Mike. The invitation still stands. Where's the original case? You mean the one you opened in the office before Michelle flew to Miami? You knew there was a bribe in there, didn't you? That's what the trial was all about, wasn't it? Did Chris know Michelle was carrying two million? No. She just happened to be walking by while I was closing the case. It would have come out in the grand jury. Uh, right. You didn't mind poisoning her anyway, did you? Then you'd have the whole courier company to yourself. Of course, there was one problem. Michelle. You thought she was still walking the streets and spaced out on dope, so you were going to drop her down a hole, and there'd be nobody to inherit Chris's half. It'd be all yours. And I didn't think your brain was one of your better parts. You care to tell me why you killed Paula? That's one question too many. Whose case is this? Mine. I had to protect myself. It's one of those embassy cases. It burns the contents if you open it wrong. Right. Better untie Michelle. Have you searched him thoroughly? Then untie her. I don't know what we would have done without you, Mike. Mmm, lovely. Cal, make sure it isn't counterfeit. Have a seat, mutt. Tie him up, Shelf. You okay? Yeah, much better. Thanks. I told you, Mike, she wouldn't be harmed. Torturing people is not my forte. I'm more of a... <coughs> <coughs>
This is for Michelle. This is for Paula. This is for Chris. And this is for me. How long has this been going on? A few days. I thought you'd be making license plates, Vance. The DA's case fizzled after a uh, private investigator got me off the hook. A tough guy named Hammer. Is he around? Knew you were a loser, but I didn't think you were a quitter. This isn't going to be one of those Marine sermonettes, is it? The Army wants to buy 500 of my choppers, but they say I've got to reorganize my plant security first. You ever done any of that? Well, now we know why the DA dropped the rest of the charges against you. Swing over tomorrow. We'll get on it. Where's Arla? Her day off. You only stutter when she's around? Gives her something to do. <laughs> tomorrow? I'd like to make reservations for two at seven. The name's Hammer. Mike Hammer. Antonio? If it's a family you want, thought we'd have dinner first. Mm. Like I said, two things you can't share are pain and guilt. Especially when you lose people who matter the most. Anyway, thank God for Velda. And the city. <laughs> 